Hello, I'm David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, episode 8 in this felt series. We're going to look at persisting our sign-in from uh, time to time, as well as adding signing out. We'll also show we had a bug in the last episode, and it was probably really minor, and you missed it just like I did. So let's look at the code. So first thing is we changed our nav quite a bit. We changed our store substantially to accommodate this persistence, and we changed our sign-in to fix a bug. Let's look at the bug first. So the first thing to know is we forgot to pass in our AUD. So it's getting set to unknown because that's what we're defaulting to within our Rails application. However, because it's required on a Rails side, it's going to basically make it so that none of the additional requests are going to actually send the proper thing. So when we look at our Rails log here, this delete from allowed list J uh, JWTs uh, for this uh, JTI with AUD of unknown was not happening. So when I was clicking sign out, um, which didn't exist yet, but when I was trying to sign out, but having not passed this in, I need to pass this in when I sign in. Uh, otherwise, it will not be able to be deleted and you will be freaking out of why your JWTs are persisting and continuing to exist. So that's the small bug. Now let's jump over to the rest of the application. So the store, let's do this first. So I took this solution from the Stack Overflow here. And you can see this is this guy's, the question was how to persist Svelte store. And there's different answers uh, all around. Um, this is the one that I really liked. So I was kind of just use this. So what he's going to do is he's going to create a new function here called create writable store. And it's going to take a key and then a starting value uh, in just you know, like the other would. Um, but we're going to have a new key, which we're going to be storing into local storage. And so this is still going to be writable. So it's the starting value. This is just like we did in the last one, where we had writable with an empty object. And then we're going to return the mirror of the uh, API for the writable. So the API writable pr uh, provides subscribe and set as two of the uh, methods on it. So we're going to return both of those again. And then an, an additional method called use local storage that is going to grab the key and if it exists, parsing it out. Otherwise, we're going to go sub subscribed to it and setting the new val value within the local storage. And we're going to stringify that JSON object. Then we're going to export the user as that. So this is basically the same as before. We just have this new method that accesses local storage. Now you might be wondering why this is necessary. And the indirection is necessary because when you first load your Svelte application, you will not have access to local storage until the cycle has mounted and you are within the application. Because a lot of this can and will run server side as well. It's just like a static HTML site or whatever. So you need to wait until the mount has happened and to ha have access to local storage. So this is an easy way to know that local storage has been mounted and let's go ahead and do this as well as subscribing to any changes uh, on this key and then saying, okay, let's keep on going and, and change this and that change that and it works. Um, it's just a fantastic solution. So I really like a uh, good job to MIC over here. So back on our nav, this is where we made changes. So we've added the on mount as an import from Svelte. It's part of their life cycles here. And then we still are going to import user from shores as the same. Now we're basically going to say on mount, and when this is finished happening, we're going to call that use local storage. And that's going to go ahead and automatically extract out the, uh, the item and parse it and set it if it's necessary. So, and then we'll log it out. Again, we use the dollar syntax to show that we're logging things out. So let's go ahead and look at that part real quick. So you can see we're not logged in. We have nothing logging from our nav. And if I submit it, we're now logged in. And as I refresh, you can see here's that object. And it'll stay persisted in. Now we can go and sign out as well. And you can see that it has cleared it like it should. So let's take a look at that sign out real quick. So the only difference here is we added an on click event uh, within Svelte. So this is the syntax on and then click again. This is similar to the form syntax that we used for sign in. 
So if we look here at the sign in form, we have the on submit, and then we're gonna prevent the default action and then handle it. We're gonna do the same here. And we're gonna ha call uh, handle sign out. This is gonna take in and create a session variable, so to speak, with the JWT that's provided from the store, as well as the AUD value. I will call the api.delete on the user's sign out. This is the one that's provided by Rails with device and JWT. We're not passing any body in, and then we're gonna pass the session. If you don't recall what the API looks like, you can go ahead and look at that in our APIs. Um, but they're all very, very um, uh, much the same. So if you look here, it's the session and passing in everything to so have our AWTs, AUDs provided appropriately. And then if we have a 200 back, meaning it was successful in logging out, we're gonna go ahead and set our user object to the empty object again. And that's it, so very, very simple. Uh, we could probably throw an error here, you know, didn't log out or something um, if we wanted, because right now we're not actually doing anything with these errors. So, um, in fact, the error doesn't even exist here. We should probably go ahead and set let error somewhere, but that's it for signing out, and as well as your first real stored persistent signing in. Um, we're going to continue on to build this out. We're, next thing we're going to do is make a slight transition and we're going to um, go ahead and throw these out on the live internet so you can start to see how you can build this and slowly build out your MVP if you're going to do build in public or if you just want to have it for yourself live rather than getting a lot of things in place, you know, you know magic strings like localhost, getting rid of that kind of stuff. So like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.